With F1 coming up in January, it's a perfect time to transition to a little bit of physics. And also because I need a little break from coding, okay? Flutter, years ago, it's kind of, it's kind of taxing on my heart and my fingers. So we're going to be doing a little bit more physics. Let's get into it. Hello everybody, I'm Karara and welcome to my first physics crash course video. And we're going to be starting from the very basics, but in this series, I want to focus on exactly what you need to know. I'm going to try to take up all the extraneous details, and I'm going to try to emphasize what's important and tell you what extra things you could know but don't need to know. And I'm going to be focusing more on Olympiads. Of course, this is also useful for AP Physics and all that other stuff, because if you're able to do Olympiads, that means you can do AP Physics really, really fast. So, honestly, this is good for everybody. So today, we're going to be talking about Trig, your favorite friendly neighborhood pre-calc topic. And basically trig is everything in physics because it helps you with vector manipulation and yeah, that's basically it. But vector manipulation is everything in physics, so yeah, trig is by extension everything in physics. So let us begin by talking about the very basics. So first, when you think about trig, first you gotta think about a triangle, a right triangle to be specific, and then it got a theta over here. And then this, let's say it's A, this is B, and this is C. Just kidding, let us use some more standard notation. So, this is called a hypotenuse, this is the opposite, because it's opposite the angle, and this is called the adjacent. And then, sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, cosine theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, and then tan theta is equal to O over A. And this is basically all you gotta know for the very, very big. This is the most important, most fundamental, and make sure you memorize this because once you have this, it's a lot easier to do all kinds of vector manipulations. So first things first, know this. The specific reason why this is so important is because if you give any right triangle and the angle, you can find any other side of the right triangle. So let's say I'm given a right triangle. This is 30 degrees, and then this is 2. Just using like sine theta, let's say sine theta is equal to 1 half, then you know that O, which is 2, over hypotenuse is 1 half. So that means the hypotenuse has to be 4. Wow, it's crazy. Jeez, I'm really bad at writing fours. Okay, four. There we go. And in physics, you gotta be able to do this really, really fast. You gotta be able to take any side of a right triangle and the angle and be able to find any other side of the right triangle super, super fast. And then you basically like set because that's the most fundamental operation you gotta do in physics. So important angles you gotta know is sine 30 degrees is one half, cosine 30 degrees is equal to root three over two. And then using that, you know that tan theta is just sine theta over cosine theta, which in this case is just one over root three. And then another important one is to do 45 degrees. And honestly, you don't even have to memorize this. Like it's kind of logical if you think about it. So let's draw out a 45 degree triangle. Wham, wablamo, wablamo, wabam, and a wablamo. Nice, look at this beautiful isosceles triangle. And then this is 45 degrees, that's 45 degrees. And you guys know your side lengths. This is 1, 1, root 2. Just by looking at this diagram, you don't even have to memorize anything. You just look at this. Well, of course, you have to remember that a 45, 45 degree triangle has 1, 1, root 2. But you can literally just do the Pythagorean theorem for that. So you basically don't have to memorize anything. And you can just say sine 45 degrees opposite over hypotenuse. 1 over root 2. What well, blima? Tan. 1 over 1. What? So, honestly, just remember your special right triangle, your 30, 60, 90, and your 45, 45, 90, and you're good. Moving on from the basics. Let us move on to the slightly less fundamental, but slightly more specialized and slightly more helpful things. Law of sines, my best friend. So this basically says if you have a triangle, it's A, B, C, A, B, C. It basically says that sine A over A is equal to sine B over B is equal to sine C over C. And why is this important? It looks like it's just a jumble of random stupid numbers. And that's what it is. No, I'm kidding. It's actually extremely useful. Because that basically means, given any side of a triangle, and any angle, and then any other angle, you can find another side. Or if you're given two sides in an angle, then you can find another side. So that can kind of OP. Now honestly, this is like just a straight up memorization thing, there's like nothing really to it. So just memorize this formula, and it will come extremely useful in vector stuff. So you don't have to be super fast at this, because it doesn't come up that much, but just be familiar with it, so that when it comes up, you're not like staring at it, wondering how to do it. To know when it's used. So basically, the two cases are if you have two sides, so this is one, this is two, and then you're given that this is 30 degrees, then you can use law of sines to find this angle, which is theta, and then you just say sine theta over one is equal to sine 30 over two. And then the other case where you could use it is if you're given two angles on one side. Wow. 
Wham, 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 and wablamo, and another wablamo, and a one. I'm very creative with my silence, okay? One and two are not the only two numbers I know, I swear. So you do sine 60 over one is equal to sine 30 over, let's say B. Then you solve for B. Pretty legit. And now for the most beautiful law of them all, the law of cosine. I swear, it's beautiful, okay? I'm gonna write it out and you guys tell me how beautiful you guys think it is. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Minus 2AB. Cosine C. Okay, yeah, fine, it's ugly. It's nasty. P pretty much the nastiest law of any trigonometry you're gonna have to learn, okay? But know it, because it's actually extremely useful. Why? Because you can literally take a triangle that's like this, this is a 30 degree, and then this is 1, this is 2, then you can find the third side. Now I know a lot of this seems a, little, a bit arbitrary right now, but you have to know this because, like, if, if you guys are familiar with vectors, I'll explain that in a future video, but like, if you're adding this vector and this vector, it's really easy to find the magnitude of this vector over here. In a niche case, you might have to take a triangle like this with all three sides are given and find the angle over here, but that's not as important. But learn how to apply it and be able to see a problem that needs it really quickly. And don't worry, if this seems really vague for now, I'm going to cover this more in the vectors thing because I really can't explain this anymore until you guys learn about vectors. There's a lot of tutorials out there if you want to learn how specifically this is applied, but in this video, I just want to give you guys a sense of what you guys need to know and the like bare minimum of what's required on the Olympiads. Remember all those congruency rules you learned in school? Well, they're actually kind of useful because basically if you have ASA congruency or SAS congruency or any of those other things, that means that you could solve every single angle in that triangle. Basically just using law of sines and law of cosines, you can find every single angle in every single side if it satisfies one of these two or any of the congruency rules like SSS is another one. And this is super important for physics because triangles are everywhere in physics. So if you don't know how to solve a triangle, look online and search up a sol how to solve a triangle tutorial and get really fast at solving triangles because they come up a lot and if you're faster at it, you're faster at physics. And also, a good thing to note is that on Adma you're given a calculator. So all this trick stuff, even though it might look really nasty on paper, is actually not that bad because you can just calculate it out using your calculator. Alright, time for some slightly physics specific uh, trigonometry stuff, okay? So basically, this is not nearly as important, but it's still important. But Basically, so far, we've covered all the very basic and extremely important stuff. Now we're going into the more advanced and things that will let you solve problems a lot faster. It also makes things a lot easier to understand conceptually. So first off, we got the area of a parallelogram. So we got a parallelogram. I swear it's parallel. This is parallel to that. Okay, trust me on that one. And then let's say this is theta, and this is a, and this is b. So hopefully you guys paid attention to math class and know that the area of a parallelogram is b times h, right? And H is like this little boy over here, right? So basically, what does this remind us of? If we're given a right triangle, this is a right triangle, how do we find this length? That's right, A sine theta. Oh yeah, now we have the height, we got the base. So how do you find the area? A is equal to AB sine theta. Wow. Formal alert, God know that. All right, another important thing that has to do with vectors, but we're not gonna get into the vectors just yet, is projecting a line onto another line. So what the heck does projecting a line mean, you ask? And that means like, wait, that basically means taking this line and finding the length of this thing such that this is a right triangle. And that seems pretty self-explanatory if we're given this is A, this is B, and this is a theta, right? It's just A cosine theta, right? So basically we just get that the projection is equal to a cosine theta. And why is this relevant? This is going to be relevant for dot product and vectors that we're going to learn in the next video, hopefully, which is coming soon. But yeah, so whenever you see two lines and you're asked to project one onto the other, just think about this diagram and then think about how it's A cosine theta. All right, the time that you've all been waiting for, trig identities, the favorite thing of all mathematicians all around the globe. You ready for this? Yes, you are. I know you are. Don't tell me you're not. So. Trig identities. I swear this said identities, but like, if you can't read it, I understand completely. Full disclosure, it's okay. Sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to one. The proof is pretty easy, right? So you're basically, this is opposite over hypotenuse. This is adjacent over hypotenuse, and we're saying that's equal to one. If we just multiply by h squared on both sides, we do opposite squared plus a squared is equal to h squared, and that's just the Pythagorean theorem. So that's how you remember that one. 
And then another two important things that you got to know is sine alpha plus beta. And this is basically equal to sine alpha cosine beta plus sine beta cosine alpha. And how do you remember that? Well, you remember that there's always a sign whenever psychos are causing trouble. <laughs> you like that? It's the best pun ever. See, look, I'm going to draw a sign that says psychos causing trouble. Okay, watch this. See, it's beautiful. See, sign, right? Sign, sign, sign. And then psycho, right, right, right. Oh, whoops. Let me, let me rewrite it so that you need to remember. Wait, wait, wait. So if we rewrite this. Okay, no wonder you guys weren't getting what I was saying. Cosine alpha sine beta. So see, we have a sine over here, right? Then we have psychos, right? And then we have causing. <gasps> and then the alpha and beta stay in the same order. So that's the way you remember the addition thing for sine. And just when you thought you had enough of trig identities, you get to the cosine addition. So let's move on to that. Cosine A plus B is equal to cosine alpha cosine beta minus sine alpha sine beta. And then obviously, like like obviously, cosine stands for coconut, right? Right? CO with the S, coconuts, get it? It's obvious. Oh dang it, that looks more like a like a bowling ball than a coconut. So co co and then nuts. I don't know. But yeah, to remember that like coconut means that there's two cosines in a row and then the other two have to be signs. It's not an exact science. You're gonna have to figure out a little bit. You're just gonna straight up like slam it into your head a little bit, but it'll work out, I swear. So that is all I got for trigonometry. And that's basically all you gotta know for physics competitions. In the future videos of this crash course, we're gonna cover more complicated things. Next time, we're hopefully gonna move on to vectors, and we're gonna show you how to apply all this nonsense I threw at you. Comment down below if there's any specific thing you wanna see in these crash courses. Other than that, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys for watching so much, and see you guys next time.